All right, so we are looking at the inside of the box that contains the Arduino. You can see there's a plastic bag holding the LCD screen over here, and I got some plastic bags and keeping some other electronics safe down there. So the Arduino itself is sitting on a shelf right here. So you can see the front here. There's a gap between the top and uh, where the Arduino is. That's the shelf where the Arduino is. We can see the Arduino by opening the top over here. And there's the Arduino Mega 2560 resting on its head. It's upside down because it's got a reset button and the reset button needed to be accessible. So it's braced upside down, just screwed upside down. All the pins are soldered on, on the bottom side, so the bottom side up. And there is a roofing nail. There's a hole beneath the Arduino's reset button. Since the Arduino is braced to the shelf, putting a nail between the Arduino and the shelf, we can I can push up on the nail and in that way access the reset button. So the reset button for this project is right here. This here is the, the bottom of a roofing nail. In the back over there, that's before while the cameras and while the um the light's shining this way. So look at this here. So down here, we have two scales. You got one here, which is a three kilogram scale. You can see the front end of the, the, the metal here. It's, I'm gonna just put my finger in front of it. To the left of my finger there, uh, right on the bottom, is the three kilogram scale. And there's a two, or the second one, is a one kilogram scale on the left there. And they, the both, the way they work is that the contortion in the aluminum itself, caused by the weight of an object sitting on them, creates a change in resistance. The Arduino itself cannot detect the change in resistance for two reasons. One, because the change in resistance is so minute that it it's just too small to be detected even when you run like five volts through it you change the resistance and there's like nano voltage difference through the the scale no matter what you put on it so it is a very small change in resistance and the arduino does not actually change does not actually detect resistance it detects voltage so you'd have to run current through it, then measure the voltage before the scale is pressed, and then measure the voltage after the scale is pressed, and then you'd know the difference between the two. But the difference is so small that the Arduino is incapable of discerning the difference between them. So what you need to go along with the YZC133 scales, those metal pieces there, those aluminum pieces of blocks there with the wire sticking out, those are the YZC-133 electronic load cell weighing sensors. By themselves are completely useless for the Arduino. So you need to add some electronics that I've got in these plastic bags here. And that goes between the Arduino and the load cell. And those are called the TM7711. They're basically signal amplifiers. They get the resistance difference in the load cell, and then they run current voltage through it, and they figure out the resistances and the voltage difference, and then they amplify the voltage difference and send back a signal to the Arduino. And the Arduino can then, once it's been calibrated properly, uh, use the information that comes out of the TM7711 electronic load cells and figure out what the weight is in pounds, which then has to be converted to kilograms and to milliliters. So that's that's the weighing scales. And you got, I got two buttons there, which should probably be, you know, covered with some more plastics, but I'm just, I haven't done that yet, so that's not happening. In the back there, with the red and black that you see around the white square, okay, the white square that you see with the dimples on it, is actually a it's a breadboard like it's a very small breadboard and i've got two wires soldered to every pin hole in it so one wire runs along the left side it's red it's vcc connected to the arduino's vcc and on the other side i got the black ground connected to the vcc and that is for the thermometers which have to be removed and replaced and 
put back in, plug back in every time this still is used. So that was necessary to power the, the thermometers. The signal themselves, the signal from the two thermometers, the signals, I guess, from the two thermometers um, has to go through. I'm having trouble holding my phone here. Okay, so it has to go through a common wire. So you could connect them to a different pin, I suppose. I haven't tried. I just like followed the instructions on a YouTube video and that's how they did it. So I did the same. So they plugged both thermometers. You could plug as many thermometers as you want. Um, to the same Arduino pin, and then you ask the Arduino to check the temperature in each thermometer, and then you you query it, you pull it, you say, what's the temperature in thermometer zero, temperature in thermometer one, and uh, that's how you get your information for the thermometers. So there's just one pin for both data, and uh, the thermometers need both the VCC and ground, so that's how they're connected, disconnected. In the back here, what you have here. This is a switch. It's actually a um, double pull, triple throw, I think, or it's, I only need two. Yeah, it's it's a double pull, double throw. So the ground and the VCC are both disconnected and normal operation. And then when something goes wrong, as it sometimes does, when something goes wrong, what I do is pull out the probe connect the clips from the probe and then poke and prod and figure out my electronics what the voltage is where and uh, to do that i just press the button in the back connect to clip of these uh, red and black clips to the probe and that uh, actually came in handy quite a bit so that's uh, that's the most electronics other than that you got uh, you know if we want to look at this here this pill bottle here is actually a bottle from water paints that I had I you know purple dyed and rendered the ghost for this project and this was pink I believe dyed also I just flushed it down the sink and carved it up and I uh, you know, covered the electronics there and tried to make it look artsy kind of thing this here was the bottom corner of a vinegar bottle and I had to cut it up and use some hot glue and that's what it looks like this here is a bottle of baby food and it's on top of a lid because it didn't, uh, th there was a splash, the spout up here, when you stick it up here, when you stick it over here, the spout was too low like that. So it was like spraying when there was, a, when there was a lot coming out, it was spraying too quickly and passing it. So I raised it so that it's just the right height. And um, so now there's no spill. And yeah, I drew that myself. I'm quite proud. <laughs> Really, I can't draw Betty Boop without a ruler, but I did draw this, and um, it doesn't look too bad. The, the paint was peeling off, so I had to cover it up with tape. The top of this this bottle here is actually the top of this jar um, is screwed on, and it's actually the top of a vinaigrette bottle that I bought like three or four buck at the Dollarama. All right, one stop shop. And um, so after that, we got um, these buttons here. Just double-sided tape with some paper and then some, some more tape on top of it and nothing fancy there. So this thing is just braced to the frame. And yeah, that's about it, you know, like that's, that's the still, that's the whole thing.